Welcome to Birds of Prey Sports Talk, where your host Jared and TJ. Did you just clap? Hey, I'm ready. It didn't even register on my end on my AirPods. Like, it didn't hear it. Like that was the most <laughs> silent clap I've ever heard. <laughs> anyway, so that's a comical way to start the video. Anyway, um, so in today's video, we're going to be discussing the series that we just played versus the Yankees. It is the opening home opener series? I think I was supposed to go, but I, you know, the rain out or the rain out, I should say. Never freaking rained out. Um, didn't get to go. Um, but my mom, my brother, and my my brother's friend had a great time. Was I hope they did. I never really asked. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> so we opened the series versus our you know common foe, the New York uh, Stankies. Um, we're gonna call them that every single time. Um, for in all good fun. Um, which is obviously a team that we've struggled with for a little bit. I mean, we give them good fights. There are games. We're, we're a nag in their side, you know, if I had to be honest, you know, we're, we just poke them all the time. You know, it's like, we're like a little brother, like, you know, like poking at them. It's like, they get, they get a no, oh my God, happened again. My computer's weird. <laughs> I hope that doesn't pop up in the videos. I'll be very upset. <laughs> I think it did. I'm just kidding. I, I, I hope, <laughs> I really hope that because they're going to, they're going to see all my files on my computer. <laughs> So I don't think they no, no they're not gonna see all my files. They're gonna see like, gonna see like all my uh, all the videos that we recorded. I hope I don't know. But anyway, um, like I said, we we a home opener versus the Yankees, and like like I've been saying, we've been a nag in their side for the past two years. I believe in twenty twenty one, we the year we won like fifty games only. We we beat them nine times, at of at of nineteen times. So they won the season series, but we beat them nine times and. I forgot how many times we beat him in 2021 or 2020. I want to say it's seven or eight, something like that. But the good thing this year, I want to remind you about the rules. Um, like I said, besides the pitch clock, you play every single team. And with that, you play your division less. You used to play your division 19 times, and I believe now you only play them 11, no, no, 13 times, I believe now. So you play your division six games less. So that's two series right there. Or – yeah, it's two series right there. So this is games one one of three of 13, which means we're only going to play them 10 more times in New York, obviously, and here. So we're going to start with the first game of the series, which was the home opener at the the, the, the most coveted day in, in, in Baltimore. I believe I'm using that word right. It's or I'm just, I, Let me just say the most exciting day, Baltimore sports, the home opener for the Orioles. So I've been to – so far, two. Um, one versus the Yankees in 2019 and one versus the Brewers last year. That was – we lost the first time and we won last year. It was fine. Opening day is a fun experience. You know, there's a lot of festivities outside. You know, they have the player introductions, which are, you know, they go down the orange carpet. And it's it's a fun time. And I'm, I'm glad my mom got to go and see a win this time. You know, she, the first – last time she went, it was a disappointing game. But that's when we were in a real rebuild mode. But like I said – this, this uh, the Orioles win the first game of the year, which was their home opener, seven to six, and that was a thriller. You know, me and you, um, I believe in one of our videos we referenced that we were de- we're down in Virginia or near Virginia, um, and uh, for your birthday weekend, and um, we watched the game on my on my on my laptop, and it was a thriller. It got my heart beating towards the end there, but um, I want to go over the top performers in this game. Um, Adley Rutschman goes one for three, walks two times. And has an RBI. I believe the game time RBI to get it to be five five or six six, and he also scores once. Gunnar Henderson has a good game finally. Goes two for five an RBI and also scores a run. Ramon Arias, who I consider to be the player of the game, has um, one walk, an RBI, and two runs scored. And Mateo, another another good game for him. Two for four, one stolen base, and one run. Um, I believe our starting pitcher was Dean Kramer. He only goes five. Um, let me let me make sure I'm correct on that. Um, uh, anyway, this this we're gonna find this. I promise. Just give me okay. Yeah, Dean Kramer goes five innings. He has five hits, four on run, four earned runs. Unfortunately, three walks and four strikeouts, and that's been the concern with him. He seems to walk a lot of guys and allow a lot of hard hits. Like a lot a lot of the times when he's pitching, he allows a lot of hard hits. You know, 100 miles an hour plus. And that's concerning, especially versus the Yankees. But he got judged to go over three for him, or over two, I believe, with two strikeouts. He 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 he, you know, laid down the hammer for the judge, you know, <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but our bullpen, um, 
like we said, it's been concerning for us. You know, besides the Rangers series, they did very well. But the bullpen in this game was four innings, four hits, two runs, two earned runs, two walks, and five strikeouts. And what did I say? What did I say? The biggest thing about pitching is to not walk, guys. The, all that does is lead trouble. It gives the team three chances to get earned runs, or get runs, I should say. And the bullpen allows two earned runs, and I believe all of them go on Logan no. Lasby is the one who ruined the game for the Orioles, really. <laughs> you know, he allows, you know, the, the – believe the goal ahead run for score and you know Gillespie Austin uh, Logan Gillespie and Austin both have really been kind of a thorn in the in the bullpen side they've really been struggling a lot and it might be time to let go of those experience you know Austin <laughs> both did fine last year but you know this year he has not been doing well at all he's just like an earn run machine it feels like but luckily our back end guy Ciano Perez while he did struggle in the eighth inning Brian Baker, who was casted out by a lot of Ravens fans on Twitter, like, you know, get out of here. We don't want you here. You know, you suck, you know, all that stuff. Comes in and saves the day, really, it feels like. Comes and shuts the door down in the eighth inning. It's, it stops the Yankees from having a big inning. And then Bautista comes in and just is the beast that he is. Let's be real. Bautista is just a monster. I want the bobblehead that he's given away this year. Hopefully we can catch that game. But I'm going to give my player of the game to Ramon Arias. And you know, this is special for him because his parents got to watch him for the first time this year. I the mean, first time ever, I should say, playing a major league game because his parents are from Mexico. They get they watch his games down at home. They get to see his brother a lot, Luis Arias, when he plays in Arizona. He plays for the Brewers, but they play in Arizona all the time. But they got to see Ramon Arias for the first time, and he shows out. He goes two for three. Um, I went over this earlier. He's two for three for a walk and an RBI, and I believe the RBI was a go-ahead base hit. So that that's huge, you know, to do that in front of your parents. I know I'd, I'd always love to do that. You know, I dreamed of that before, like, you know, I stopped playing baseball. But, um, you know, but I, I do want to propose a question. You know, the bullpen, really Logan Gillespie kind of struggled, you know, and made it interesting towards the end. And you, you don't want that against the game. Like, be real here. Like you, you don't want to make it interesting if you put them away, you put them away for good, you know. So I do want to ask. The A at least has a lot of power hitters. You can think of some: Aaron Judge, you know, Jared Hall Stanton, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Rafael Devers, and yeah, I mean, I guess Wander Franco or Randy Orosarena for the Rays. But you know, they got a lot of there's a lot of power and contact guys in the A at least. So that we face the A at least more than thirty times this year, obviously, because we play each team 13 times. Is it a concern for you that this bullpen, honestly, like I said, there's a lot of power hitters. Is it a concern that they might possibly get lit up as their worst series so far have been versus AL East opponents? Well, it is definitely a concern given the amount of danger, dangerous players that are in our division. But I was really, really surprised with – how we pitch against Aaron Judge. I mean, I think we made him go 0 for 4 in this yeah. game. I mean, he was barely he wasn't even a factor. And it's kind of the same thing for Shank Carlo. I think he I think he drove in one hit, a one or one run, and that was mm-hmm. it. But it it was just very, very, you know, I was very, very proud to see how we basically eliminated their top two threats. And I feel like if we can, you know, at least steal a couple games like that. From our other, you know, AO East foes, you know, right. from got, you know, steal some more games like that against the Yankees where we get Aaron Judge to go over four, you know, Shaq Carlos Stanton to do the same thing, you know, the same thing where we're playing against the Blue Jays, you know, we get Vladdy Guerrero to get off his game. Mm-hmm. You know, that makes me very, very, that makes me very, very, you know, hopeful, you know, that our ball pick could, you know, be clicking like that when it comes to the top players, you know, if, right. and I feel like this, right? Obviously, it's it sucks to give up a run, but I feel like, you know, if you give up a run, I would rather give up a run to the role players other than the top players any right. day of the week. I would, I would rather do that. And so, you know, that's why I'm proud of how we did pitch. You know, yeah, we did make it interesting towards the end. We did make it harder on ourselves than what it needed to be. But I'm very right. proud of how we handled their top guys. And, you know, that just shows 
that there is urgency in the pitching room. There is urgency talked about around the coaches in our organization. You know, there are guys that are like, hey, you know, we need to pitch this guy a certain way. You know, let's go about it this way. And we're actually doing it. We're actually executing our plans. So, you know, I'm very, very excited to see how we tackle guys like Buddy Guerrero, how we tackle guys like Randy or Rosarena, how we tackle Rafael Devers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and even when it gets to the NL guys, how we tackle Acuna, Tatis. You know, I'm I'm very, very, you know, hopeful that we can, you know, get them off their game like how we did Aaron Judge. It was very, very and great to see. I, you know, I'd have to agree, you know, um, pitching around him is probably the best move, you know. And um, I don't know. I, I definitely do agree with everything you said. You know, you don't want these guys to beat you because then you're going to wonder, like, why did we pitch around them? Or like, why did we try to go for it? Like, he's going to overpower you 80% of the time. Just don't do it. Just don't even try it. You know, mm-hmm. and there's been Orioles killers every year. You know, 2019 was Gleyber Torres, and it's always been Aaron Judge. And then it was Randall Gritchitz for the – Randall Gritchick, I forgot his name, for the Blue Jays. And then I forgot what it was in 2021. I think it was Randy Rosarina again. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then again in 2022. So it's like, you want to shut these guys down especially known guys who want to, you know, do damage against you. And it's like, it gives me confidence that maybe they're starting to be smarter with these guys mm-hmm. who are known killers, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, I want to hop into game two. Um, game two, we did lose uh, four to one. Um, there is no top hitters, really. We only had four hits. Um, those four hits were from Mullins, Rutschman, um, Frazier, and Arias. Um, Cole Irving. Uh, a trade that we made early this year for Cole Irvin from the Athletics. I struggled. Um, I haven't got to see any of his starts. Um, but he struggled versus the Red Sox, and he struggled versus the Yankees. Cole Irvin only goes four and two-thirds, four hits, three earned runs, four walks, five strikeouts. And that's not what you need. You know, four going only four and two-thirds innings is not ideal. You know, you need your starting pitchers to go five, six innings and the four walks are killer. You can't walk the Yankees. I'm sorry. You can't allow free brace runners for guys to hit two or three run shots or whatever and give free opportunities for Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton, Anthony Rizzo, or whatever. You know, you just can't. And it's, just, it's disappointing to see that this trade so far hasn't panned out for the Orioles. Cole Irving has really struggled. Um, we, me and you didn't get to watch this game um, because we were spending the day, you know, full day together. You know, we weren't like, you know, watching you know the game or anything and but um the only I guess the players of the game really are the actually I didn't write one down because no one really deserved it. You know, um the bullpen goes four one third, only three hits, one on run, one walk and two strikeouts. So I guess they got the job done, you know, for our offense, but the offense just couldn't get it going. Four hits isn't gonna do it and um, the only run we um, have is a Santander says Santander sacrifice fly in the first inning and then nothing after that. Like and I said, don't worry. Oh, go ahead. And um, again, I wanted to mention um, like how we said, Austin both again, he allowed, um, he allowed a, a run in his game and only got one strikeout in two innings. So, um, again, you know, he needs to. I I I would say he needs to. It's very sad to see him kind of struggle like this, you know, after having a promising season last year. So, um, you know, hopefully. He can get, you know, he can just get his stuff together. And, you know, maybe before the All-Star break or else, you know, like how we mentioned earlier, we have to let him go. I mean, that that was kind of besides the topic, but I just wanted to point that out. You know, Austin Wolf again kind of contributed towards the loss in a way. And um, I wouldn't say it's he wouldn't necessarily contribute. I mean, obviously the earned run isn't going to be, you know, helpful for the team, but that was really Cole Irving's, you know, doing. He got the loss too, you know, but – um. Sorry, but this loss is really on the offense. You know, I think four runs is serviceable, you know, for an offense to come back from. And to get four hit is – I don't even know who was pitching for the Yankees. Um, Let me see if I can look. Yeah, I don't even know Jay Brito. I don't even know the guy's name. (laughs) So, um, yeah, it's a shame because, I mean, you're going to have games like this where you're not going to hit well. But it seems like oftentimes it feels like when we play the Yankees, it feels like we do have games like this where we – just don't have it offensively. And we're going to need the offense to show up in these games, like how they did versus the home opener. 
you know, that was good. That was good for us. And we're going to need that more often against the Yankees because get sick and tired of the Yankees, man. You know, I want to yeah. finally put them away for good one time, you know, and, you know, I, the bullpen did fine in this game, but, you know, like I said, the offense, man, just wasn't clicking at all. And, you know, I think they gave us a good chance to win the bullpen and, and everything, you know, but um, we're going to skip ahead to game three. Um, we lose this one too. So we lose the series. Unfortunately, we lose this game three to five. And again, nothing really to show for on the offensive side, because while it may look like it did good because you got six hits, three runs in a home four run, of those, four, four of those hits are from Adley. Yeah. Four, four for four, one home run, one RBI, two runs scored. So it doesn't even look good. And, and another thing I want to discuss about this game, Mullins, you see on the top, he goes over four and dropped his batting average to 189. Mons is really not what's good on in on hitting at all. Like in the first series versus the Red Sox, he looked like 2021 20, Mullins, but then like the last two, he's just been not so good. Honestly. He really has been struggling with the bat. He just doesn't seem to have it, honestly. And you know, everybody was saying talking about Hayes, like, you know, you know, Hayes probably got to go. You know, we got guys waiting for him, but I wouldn't push it past, you know, Mullins. You know, if he continues to struggle, we might be, you know, looking at like some guys to, you know, take his at bats at some points if he's not going to get it together. Because, you know, I believe last year he batted like 250, you know, only like 14, 13 home runs and, you know, didn't put up the same production in 2021. He's a great leader, though. That's the only thing you can't replace. You know, so I wouldn't necessarily say that there's going to be some guy ready to take his place more as maybe for Austin Hayes, but he's raking right now. But for Mullins, like I said, you're going to have to start having a conversation if this starts to permeate more deeper to the season. It's not good to have a bad start like this, but, you know, I have confidence in him that he can get it together. And my player of the game is Adley. He always performs no matter what, you know. You can't be – you can't ever – you can always rely on him and say it. Our starting pitcher is Tyler Wells, who had the, the his version of a no-hitter, you know, versus the Rangers. He goes six innings, six hits, four earned runs, no walks, key, six strikeouts. And what's 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 good about this is that he didn't walk anybody, but what's bad about this, four earned runs. And you need to, like I said, you need to avoid that, you know, the, the giving up, you know, runs to the Yankees, obviously. But what makes me feel a little bit better is that they weren't runs off of walks. You know, though these are just straight up earned runs. I'm gonna see, you know, it's just stand single. Yeah, so they scored uh four early runs, you know, and it's just I'm not mad about the performance. I'm more mad at the offense for not contributing. Um, because it's let me see, my Mount Castle got a hit and Santander got the other hit. Santander did get two RBIs. Um he got I think he got on a double. Um, versus Nestor Cortez, or right after he got pulled out of the game, but um, again the offense just kind of sputtered against the Yankees, and like I said, you can't do that. You know, you need your guys to come in and be like, I don't care that you're the best pitcher, you know, or a good pitcher, or whatever. I'm gonna take my take my pitches and everything. And look at Adley, four for four, young one of the younger guys in the team, second year. You know, so it's like some of these guys might gotta learn from Adley to just be patient. And hit the ball well, you know? And, I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of frustrating. It, it really is because – let me see what the bullpen did. The bullpen did fine, but another problem, Logan Gillespie comes in, allows a bomb to judge. You just can't do that. Judge actually, I believe, hit two home runs this game. Two home runs. You can't do that. You just cannot do that. If Judge hits multiple home runs in a game – you probably lose the game, especially for the Orioles. And again, same guys: Logan Gillespie, Austin Voth. And I'm not, I'm a no nonsense, no nonsense guy when it comes to sports. So I'm easily ready to let people go, especially on my video games, you know. But this isn't a video game; this is real life. And I'm not control the Orioles, but their leashes are getting shorter, man. And I know we don't have the depth right now to on the bullpen to really replace them, but. These guys are being a – they're really a nuisance in the bullpen, you know. I think that Bryant Baker has got it together after his first – you know, his early season struggles. Danny Coulomb has really been a good trade for – I believe he traded for him or picked him up, I don't remember. 
And then Bauman has also been another one who's pretty good. Perez has also been kind of been a little shaky to start the year. He had a great year last year, but Felix Bautista is a beast like usual. But but like I said, the common denominator out of all of these is what? Logan Gillespie and Austin both. I'm going to skip into the future a little bit. Me, 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 you, and my mom went to the baseball game yesterday where Ryan Malcastle hit a grand slam. We had like nine RBIs. Um, hopefully we can cover that series with not knowing the future of games, finally. But, you know, who were the problems in that game? Logan Gillespie, Austin Wolf. Austin Wolf, the same guys. I'm getting tired of them. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm getting tired of them. And I don't agree when it comes to booing your own team or its own players, even after struggles, but Austin Wolf deserved that. He almost ruined the game versus the Yankees. Or no, it was either Glass. No, I think it was both. And then both comes in and ruins the game versus the A's. Luckily, we came back and won. But you, yeah, it's annoying. It really is annoying. I'm really getting sick of this because it's like how we talk about the Ravens. You let things permeate too long, it starts to become a cancer. And it's like, how long are you going to have these guys on the team messing up games and completely blowing them before you get rid of them? Mm-hmm. So. I guess my question to you is just, do you get rid of these guys now, even though it's only April? No, no way. You know, like, like we, like, like we kind of allude to, you know, in our, in our previous videos, we got to let, we got to let this team figure out what type of team they are. We have to let the team fight their adversity, especially early on in the season. And especially with these guys fighting their individual battles, that's what a season is all about is how, you fight your and how you fight and win your battles throughout the it throughout the way, you know, and then you all come together when it's time in the playoffs, and you know you've been through your battles, you've been through everything you've been through. You're the perfect, you're the most perfect version of what you are and what you'll ever be in a season. So you know, cutting these guys right now, I feel like that's honestly hurting the chemistry. You know, when and when it comes to Mullins and guys that are you know in their hitting slumps, when it comes to the pitching like Austin Wolf. Yes, that's concerning because it's consistent. But I feel like when it comes to Mullins, you know, he's been on this he's been on this roster for a couple of years. I feel like, you know, you just have to, you know, let him settle in, you know, let him simmer in. You know, cutting him, I feel like, you know, won't Oh no, no, no. I was not talking anything. about cutting Mullins. No, no. I'm not, just, I'm just using them I, just as an example, as an example. I'm just saying, you know, you gotta let these guys fight their own battles and win them. You know what I'm saying? Because that'll add more confidence to them, it'll add more confidence to the team, everybody. We'll gel together better, you know, in my opinion. I agree with you in the Mullins. I strongly disagree with the both and Gillespie thing. Um, I understand team, te- team chemistry and all that, but I'm sorry, but the, if they hold on to these guys for too long, and this is a, this has been a consistent thing, every time they come in, there are two, three runs they give up. I'm sorry. If, if we're looking in October and we missed the freaking playoffs by two or three games, and we look back, back when we had Austin both. When we had three or four run leads, they come in, allow a grand slam or allow a three run shot. You're gonna look at that and be like, "Well, imagine we got rid of him sooner." But maybe a guy could take. Let's say a guy takes his place, Austin Voth or Logan Gillespie, who's lights out, you know. And then you could have had him to start. I mean, obviously you don't know that because you can't predict the future as a GM. But I'm sorry, it's just if there's consistency, this is multiple games now. Voth and Gillespie, those two, it's consistent games all over and over and over, and I. I don't know how long they're going to let this happen. If, they, if we're still talking about this in July, of them continuing to blow these games, that's a problem. I'm sorry. That's not playoff like playoff baseball right there. That's just not – and I understand building team chemistry, letting guys figure stuff out, but sometimes experiments need to end. We've seen this all since both experiments succeed in this in a little bit, but right now it's not, and it's just going to continue to hinder this team, especially if we're supposed to be considered a playoff team. We can't have these guys dragging us down. I'm sorry. Got to cut the weight and let new guys. We got a guy in the minors, I believe, you know, um, Nick Vespi, who is one of our uh, uh, bullpen prospects, who I believe is, is doing good down in AAA. So it's like, bring him up. See what he can do. He was up here last year. They let him down. He struggled a little bit, but he worked out a little bit. And then they sent him down and he needs to be back up. And then you're going to get Dylan Tate back and everything. And who knows how he's going to be. And you're going to get Mike Gibbons as well. So it's like, I don't know. I just feel like there's just, there's got to, I'm not a guy, like I said, no nonsense type of dude when it comes to sports. And it's like, when they come in the game, what do you do? Oh, 
we go. You know, that's what we, that's what I was going on a whole rant yesterday when they brought in Austin Voth with the bases loaded after they took out Grayson Rodriguez. I wanted a whole rant. What happens when you bring in a guy with 10 ERA with the bases loaded and no outs? What do you expect to happen? Some great things, no. You expect him to give up his 10 ERA. And he erased it at the 13. So it's like you don't want to bring in these disasters in these clutch moments. You know, so you can't. I'm sorry, you just can't can't have this happen. Especially if it's consistent. Two, three, four games so far, how it's been. You just been there's been no games, I'll show you promise. Brian Baker started off the season awful with his first with his first appearance. He gave up a few runs, but he's coming in ever since then and shut the door down to every game he's been in. Both in Gillespie have not showed that whatsoever. And honestly, they use they need to use Danny Coulomb a little bit, who's shown way more than those two so far. So it's been a disaster with those two so far. And I'm very on a short leash with I'm past the leash on wanting to let them go. Sorry. I'm not interested in this. I watched so many years of Oros baseball of these freaking throwing these these some of these bums out there and watching them blow big leads. I'm not interested in watching it in a team that's supposed to be a playoff team. I'm sorry. So a little rant, I guess. <laughs> um, but anyway, that was the Yankee series. That was the Orioles versus Yankees series. We do unfortunately lose the series to the Yankees. Um, oh, and we dropped to I believe we dropped to four and five at the time before the Athletic series. Um, we do have a favorable schedule ahead of us. Um, we play the Athletics for four, um, the White Sox for three, the what's it called, the Nationals for two. Um, the Tigers for three and Boston for either two or three. And um, I think that's favorable for us, to be honest, because they're below average opponents. You need to take care of business. The good teams take care of bad teams. That's been a problem with the Orioles. It seems like for since like last year, I believe they won like one game versus the Tigers. The Tigers won like 60 games last year. You can't not do that this year. That's not acceptable anymore. You can't lose against these bad teams. So, you got to finish business. That's as simple as possible. Finish the job against these bad teams. And then when it comes to freaking good teams like the Yankees and all that, show up. No more of these four hit games or six hit games and four of them are by one player. You have to show up. I, I But I'm not going to get too hard on them because it is April. But if this is still happening in August, September, it's a problem. And they need to show up. And somebody needs to say something. Or there needs to be a change in the hitting coach or whatever it is needs to be. I don't know what it needs to be, but it needs to be something where it's like, all right, guys, like this is we're playing a good team here. And that's all you're going to play in the postseason. So these six hit performances or these four hit performances or even two hit performances aren't going to cut anything. So, like I said, got to just continue to put your footing on. And another thing, Gunner's been struggling this year so far as well. But I have confidence in him because he's been getting on base with walks. He has a good fielding, you know, range with his arm and his fielding ability. So I'm going to give him time because he's only 21 years old or 22 or whatever. So this team is exciting, but they can also be very stressful at the same time. They could be a pain in the ass, you know, especially, you know, when they hold on to guys um, a little bit too long. But do you have any last thoughts? All right. I think, uh, no, I think we covered everything. All right. So, like I said, very favorable opponents for our next 22 games, I believe. I think that's 22 games. If not, I can't do that. But um, yeah, um, we will be going to DC next week. Um, in our next video, um, I believe that will be the athletics recap. If something doesn't happen with the Ravens, we will be posting some pictures and videos from that series. Um, that we did get to go to. Uh, we went to yesterday, and then we also will be posting um the one for the Nationals recap when we go down to DC. That will be my first time. I believe your first time as well going to a different stadium that's not Camden Yards. Yes. Be my so first time that's, too. That's gonna be exciting. We're gonna can't wait for all this. You know, hopefully this you know channel brings us more opportunities to travel to different stadiums. Um, we want to make a few trips, maybe to the Chicago Cup Stadium. Yes, um, yes. Maybe up to the Yankee Stadium. They play up in Philly this year. We can get up there as well. You know, just just think about all the possibilities. You know, um, hopefully one of these Baltimore sports teams gives us a job. You know, to work for that. <laughs> Just putting that out in the universe every time. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna try to say that. Every It'll video. happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. So, <laughs> well, this takes off as well. Uh, we love our teams. We're very passionate. That's why sometimes we go on little rants every once in a while, just because we want to see them succeed. You know, we mm-hmm. don't like to see losing teams. You know, we've seen that enough. Um, so, um, uh, be on the lookout. Um, we got a few videos post. 
at this time when we post this video, we may have already two or three videos posted at the time. Um, you know, we're going to try to be up to date as possible, but you know, person, like I said, personal life things get in the way sometimes. And, um, you know, we'll eventually be the channel that's going to be on it, like in Graven, you know, like right, right, right away. But, you know, right now we're working with the best we got. Um, but, um, like, like I said, it's, when we go to games and everything, expect Ravens games or Orioles games, expect, you know, pictures and videos of taken of the games, you know, and um, I, I got, I'll leave that as a surprise, the video that I have, you know, for the athletic series. Um, it's a good video, I promise. <laughs> um, I may have to mute it, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I may I, I may just leave it, you know, just to, you you guys probably want the authentic experience. But anyway, um and if you don't have any last thoughts, I'm gonna, we're gonna sign off here. All right. All right. Well, we don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to Birds of Prey Sports Talk. Follow our Instagram and TikTok as well. Link will probably be in the bio. I'm gonna say probably because like I'm gonna forget probably. I probably gotta set a reminder. But anyway, uh we're Birds of Prey Sports Talk and we're out. Right.